Compass FM. Well, uh, Anne Jelfs is a friend to Compass FM, and she's certainly a friend to the Rangiora Museum. Uh, she's officially the uh, archivist, but she does all sorts of things. And uh, very good morning. How long have you been with the museum for now? Well, my husband initially was a member uh, almost from the early days, which was really the early 60s. So when I got married to him, I joined the museum society as well. So that was, I went to the opening of the hall, of the, of the rooms where they are now on Good Street in 1960. Wow. So mm. you've, you you know the museum inside out, really. And we're going to have a look at some of the new displays uh, shortly. But uh, I'd like to start with the Rangiora and District's Early Records Society. What's that about, Anne? Well, we collect the early records of the Rangiora District and any of its history. That's mainly what we're there to do, is to collect. Uh, one time I was on a shop day and somebody asked, could they bring along their records, being the LPs and things like that? Well, that's not quite what we want. Wanted. Right, nice try. But yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, but generally we are known as the Rangiora Museum on Good Street. Okay, and uh, everything going well with the Early Records Society? The, the society's going well and the museum is also going very well. We're open two days a week um, on Sundays and on uh, Wednesday afternoons, 1.30 to 4. And I'm sure that there, were, there are other times that we could be open and people would come. But we also have a website and so that we get inquiries from all all over the world and that really is interesting people wanting us to do a bit of research generally to find out where their parents or great grandparents are buried okay and we have very extensive burial records and um, the WIMAC graves that the genealogy society the CD is really or DVD is really superb yeah uh, you're an amazing asset to the area and military records that sort of thing We've got some military records um, we did it during the centennial of the f- first world war war we did um, and the genealogy branch here in Rangiro did most of the work and uh, the profiles of the local soldiers who were killed and we have those there. Yep and coming up I think it's Thursday this Thursday mm-hmm. starting at 7 30 uh, Craig Gurney he's the president of the Christchurch Antique Bottle and Collectors Club uh, he's going to be displaying some of his collection at the museum is it? Yes but he's actually speaking about the history of corkscrew and other kitchen utensils so I think that's going to be fascinating because um, we had their group came to visit us one Sunday and so he was there and he offered to come and speak about corkscrews there was another gentleman came he was very interested in marbles and he was fascinated with our marble collection which I thought were just kids toys but no there were some from Germany some from here some from there it's it's amazing what the history of just an everyday item is yeah, like everything, I guess, once you start delving into it, you find there's a, a huge history behind yes, a lot of these things yes. that we t- kind of take for granted. And getting back to the corkscrew thing, I, I guess you'll have a number of things where you look at and think, well, what on earth does that do? Yes. I would imagine. Uh, yes. But I'm fascinated to know that he will also be bringing his collection of um, you know, antique bottles and that sort of thing. Do you know anything about those, where he's found them, sourced them? or? Yes, and there was also another gentleman, Warren, who below is very high up in in bottle collections and he spoke to us perhaps a couple of years ago and he clicks all around the world it's amazing but we have um, in Rangiora in the early days there was lots of cordial factories around uh, mainly on the Northbrook stream because they had a good water supply and so there's um, sharps and all sorts of the the flagons and the the lovely shaped bottles and all sorts it really is we've got quite a display of those yep and speaking of displays you're always adding I can tell you this the Rangiora Museum every Everybody is in very good heart. I think you've got more or less more volunteers than you need, more people on the committee than you can. In other words, you know, there's there's plenty of support and always people coming in with things that they would like you to display. Too many, really. You can't take it all, can you? No, no. Uh, we're running short of storage, which is the story of most museums. So we have to be very strict about our collection policy and we abide by that. So once a month at our committee meeting, we will uh, assess anything that's given to us or mentioned that they want to give to us and so but it must pertain to this area it must have some connection to this area all right so that's Rangiura or Waimakariri no it is Rangiura right that's yes, interesting yes okay. Rangiura and perhaps Wood End might we might take Wood End and, and White Rock or Lowburn yep but certainly just this immediately because there is Koai archives and there's Oxford Museum there's Cast Museum there's Kaipoi so they all have their right specific portfolios 
keep to yourselves and do your own thing. Yes. And uh, what has been added recently? Well, the, the last two uh, um, displays that we've had, Angela, who does our displays in charge, she found, or somebody found a photo of a gun club, I think it was, and a, a rabbit shoot. But the gun club men all had these wonderful hats, and I suppose it was in perhaps the 1930s. So she's worked a display of that, of, of um, cartridge making and um, not the guns, because we don't have any guns anymore. Um, and then on the other side is there were some beautiful smoking caps you know, that gentlemen used to put on when they were going into the smoking room, beautifully embroidered and beautiful um, waistcoats. And so we've got little snuff boxes and things like that in that display. The other one that we've done is when there was the shop locally, or shop local, I think it was, dis- um, promotion. We have taken some of the local businesses and so there was like the bricks from hills on brick kiln road and um, hats from various ladies shops and dresses from shops and all sorts of things like that we're always keeping it fresh and great to see Anne. and for anyone wanting to perhaps uh, research their family history uh, can they come to you and, and you might be able to help yes yes that's we spend quite a bit of time doing that we have a website so people can t- contact us from all around the world really to research their family family. Um, the last one I think I have looked at was the Doyles who were looking for their family who was, uh, the father was buried in the Catholic Church. Well, of course, or Catholic Cemetery, of course, that's no longer, but the plaques are on the wall at the Catholic. Right. And um, let's just get back to those opening hours again. Folks, if you haven't been to the Rangiora Museum ever, or you haven't been in a while, it's brilliant. It really is. And and when are you open? We're open on a Sunday afternoon and a Wednesday afternoon, one thirty to 4. But we do have groups that come in by special arrangement, and, and if they phoned the museum, we can always set up a time for groups to come. Sometimes we will go and speak to groups, but it is nicer if they come to us because the things are there, the photos are there. It's much easier. Absolutely. Anne Jelfs is the archivist for the Rangiora Museum. Compass FM.